Welcome to our first 15 minute fundamental session. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through um, some of the basics of working with SAP Business One. We're going to look at the different ways that you can log on. Then we're going to take a look at the navigation and the user interface in SAP Business One. So this may be very well the first time you've ever seen SAP Business One. Uh, if it is, welcome. Uh, I hope you'll see uh, how simple and easy the user interface is uh, for you to work with. So when you start up SAP Business One, the very first screen you're get, gonna get presented with is this screen. This is where it's asking you for your username and password. Now, a couple of things here. You'll notice that there is this option for logging on with your Windows account. This is because SAP Business One supports what's known as single sign-on. So if your administrator has configured it, what'll happen is when you tick that log on with Windows account button, SAP Business One is going to log on with your username and password that you use with Microsoft Windows. So in my particular instance, I'm using a domain called SMB Solutions and my username is Richard. So that's what it's going to try and do. It's going to try and check to see whether or not there is a user in SAP Business One that is mapped through to that particular user. And if it is, then when I click OK, the system is going to log me on. So I'll click OK and you'll see it's giving me a message, hey, your username or password is incorrect. So I'll say OK to that and then you'll see it's now giving me a list of companies because this is the first time I've logged on from this computer. So it's going to ask me to select my company and this is where you'll see a list of all the companies that you've been granted access to. So I'll select that company and then I'll say OK. Now, because this is the first time I've done this, it's asking me to re-enter my SAP Business One credentials so it can confirm that my Business One system is linked to this Windows username. So I'm just gonna put in that password that is set up for that user. And then I'll say confirm. That's now done. So it's tied that SAP Business One user to that Windows user, and I'm now able to log in using that single sign-on capability. All right, so when that single sign-on capability is switched on, it makes it very, very easy for you to log on and off with SAP Business One. So this is the main user interface. So you'll see right now I'm using what's known as the standard SAP Business One skin. Now when you log on, your system may look different and it may look different for a couple of different reasons. It may look different because you're using SAP Business One version for HANA. It may look different because you've got the cockpit switched on. So right now, I am logging on and I am using SAP Business One and my backend database is SQL Server. That's what I'm gonna use for a lot of the sessions that we're gonna be doing. But then for the functionality that is HANA specific, I will of course um, be logging on with the HANA client. So you can see, I have my menu structure set up. Now some of you might already be looking at this if you're familiar with SAP Business One and you might think, that looks a little bit different. There's some extra menu options on there that I've never seen before. For example, there's this CRM option. Well, all of our sessions that I'm gonna be recording, I'm gonna be doing with SAP Business One 9.3. So most of the standard functionality will be the same. It's just that there is some additional functions available in 9.3. So what I thought I'd do is make sure that I cover off uh, on recording these sessions with the most recent version of the software. So let's take a look at the standard screen that you've got when you log into SAP Business One. So you have your main menu over here. And in the main menu, you've got each of the modules that you've been granted access to. Sitting underneath each one of those modules is the functionality for that module. For example, if I click here on CRM, you'll see that the menu opens up and I've got these additional choices underneath. So I've got my business partner master data, the ability to create activities, to generate marketing campaigns, and then at the end of most of these options, you'll actually find the report. So if I click on that folder, you'll see underneath that folder, I have a number of different reports, and I've got the ability to scroll up and down through those. Now, of course, you can open this menu bar right up so it's going right down the side of the screen, 
All right, and then what will happen um, is as you shrink and expand the menu, it will fill that particular um, space that you've got available there. So if you look down here, you've got all of those modules as I mentioned. Then you have this functionality called drag and relate. What drag and relate enables you to do is it enables you to go in and look at the data that's sitting underneath these modules. For example, if I go here and I look at my business partners, I'm able to go in and I can double click on business partners and it shows me all of my business partners that are in here. So I can see the business partner code, the business partner name and so on. Now, anywhere in SAP Business One where you see these golden arrows, that means you have the capability to drill down to the underlying data underneath that. So for example, here I've got Earthshaker Corporation. If I click on the golden arrow underneath that, it's going to allow me to um, open up the business partner master data screen. All right, we're going to look at some of these screens in a little bit more detail. But then you'll see we've got more golden arrows here. I've got $371,000 worth of sales orders sitting here for Earthshaker. Again, click here on the golden arrow, it drills me down and I get a list. Again, if I want to look at a specific sales order, I can click on the golden arrow and it drills down and it opens up that sales order for me. So very important to remember that golden arrow functionality. It's going to be very helpful for you as you're working through the software. A couple of other things on the user interface, anywhere where you see this little um, blue back arrow, that's going to allow you to jump back to the screen that you came from. All right. So that's bringing me back to my business partner master data. Now the interesting thing about this is what you're able to do is if I've got this business partner master data field open, if I go up here in my drag and relate and I open up my sales AR, let's say for example I wanted to see all the sales orders that are sitting in the system for Earthshaker. I click and I drag and drop that code over the top of my sales order and then you'll see it opens up all of the sales orders for Earthshaker Corporation. And then you've got this filter down here. You can click on that filter and what it will do is it will show you all of those columns that are in that view and will give you the ability to select uh, a particular value there. So I might want to, for example, see only the sales orders where the status is equal to and I only want to see those orders that are open. So I can type in open and say OK. Now you're going to notice that that's not showing me any results. Why is that? Well important to remember that sometimes you don't want to use the actual name, you want to use a code. So the actual code for open is just O. Alright? So if I put an O there, now you'll see that I have that status of open. I'm going to explain to you how you can find out some of these additional things as you go through the user interface. But for now, I'm just going to focus on that, uh, on that drag and relate. So this information is currently shown to you in a grid. All right. So anytime you want to, you can take any information that's being shown to you in a grid and you can push it out to Microsoft Excel. All you need to do is come up here and click on the MSXL icon. This is your toolbar across the top uh, and the different functions that show up here that you can click on will change according to the screens that you have open here. All right, so important to remember that these toolbar buttons are context sensitive. They depend on what you're seeing down here. All right, so for example, if I want to, I could click on the MSXL and you'll now see it's going to ask me, hey, where do you want to save this file? And it's going to save it as a plain text file and I'll hit save. It's just going to check my locations and it's going to say, hey, you don't have um, permission to save it in that folder. Would you like to save it in your local folder instead? And I'll say yes. Automatically changes to that and then you can hit save. It's going to ask me then, do you want to export the currency symbols? 
Okay, if they're different currencies, because remember business one is multi-currency. I'm gonna say, no, I don't want the currency symbols. And then I say, okay. And that export is now run for me. And that file will be sitting there ready for me to go ahead and open up in Microsoft Excel. All right, so it makes things very, very easy for you when you're working with SAP Business One. Now, of course, if you wanna close that screen down, you simply click on the X up in the top right-hand corner. So hopefully you understand that capability that you've got there. Again, same scenario, if you wanted to look at all of your accounts receivable invoices for Earthshaker, you can click and drag on the code. You can even click and drag using the name. So I can drag the name across and there once again, you'll see it's now showing me all of my uh, functions or all of my records there that are accounts receivable invoices and it's showing me those ones for Earthshaker. Again, I'm gonna do a filter. Now, what do you think the status code would be that I'd have to use here if I only wanted to see the closed transactions? Well, if you said C, you're absolutely right. So I can say, show me those transactions where the status is equal to C for closed, and then I'll say, okay. So now I'm just seeing the closed. Again, if I want to change that filter, click in there. I only want to see those that are open. Change that to an O. And now I'm just seeing all the open items. Make sense? Cool. All right, so let's hit cancel on that and let's hit cancel here as well. And you see, how did we get there? We got to there from the Dragon Relate and Business Partners. So the great thing about SAP Business One is that you have the capability to be able to take all of those different functions and have them open at different times and then you can swap between those windows. So let me give you an example. If I go across here to my modules again, let's say I want to create a sales order. So I go in here into my sales and I go and I open up a sales order. So I am working on a sales order. Let's retrieve an existing one. That's what these video buttons are for here. This video button takes me to the first record, the last record, and these allow me to go backwards and forwards. So I'm gonna to go to the last sales order that's been created in the system. So let's say I'm right in the middle of working on this sales order and somebody comes rushing up to me and they need me to answer a question for a customer really, really quickly. They say, quick, tell me what Earthshaker Corporation owes us at the moment. No problem, all you need to do is go into Business Partners, open up your Business Partner Master Data. You can go in here and you can find Earthshaker. You can click here and start typing EAR and hit Enter. There's your record for Earthshaker. Yep, they owe us 1.1 million. Time for somebody to do some debt collection, I think. Um, so they owe us 1.1 million. You give the person the answer. Your other screen is still there, open, ready for you to keep working. All right, so you can have as many of those screens open as you want. And if you do get confused, of course, you can go up here to the window function. You can choose cascade, which will try and arrange them on the screen for you. Or you can just say close all and that will close all of the windows. Okay, so important point to note, many of those screens open as you want. Now, a couple of other things I'm gonna show you in this first one of our sessions. SAP Business One has some functionality that is called cockpits. Now, I don't have the cockpits currently switched on. Okay, what cockpits are, they are a way of displaying information on your desktop. So if you don't have the cockpit switched on, what you can do is you can go up here to Tools and you go up to Cockpit and you'll choose Enable My Cockpit. And then the system will tell you, hey, this setting's gonna take effect next time you log on to SAP Business One. So I'm gonna say, okay. And then I'm gonna quit out of SAP Business One. Now to do that, you click on File and choose Exit. You can press Control Q, which is your keyboard shortcut, or you can go up here and you can click on the little X and that's gonna close you out of SAP Business One. Just gonna remind you, this is gonna stop all your processes and close all the open windows. Are you sure you wanna continue? Yes, I do. So that now takes me out of SAP Business One. But when I log back into SAP Business One again, and again, I'm gonna choose that by clicking on my Windows Start button. Then I'll go and choose my SAP Business One 9.3 client. And that's gonna start up for me again. 
Now in this particular instance, I'm accessing my SAP Business One from a remote desktop session. So you'll see it's now remembered the last company I was in. I'm logging on with my Windows account and I can say OK. Speaking of logging on, remember I can untick that and then I can just log in with my user ID and my password. All right, so if you don't have that single sign-on switched on, you can still, of course, log in with your username and password, and then you simply say OK. Choose the company. And you're in, but now you'll see Business One now looks different. Why? Because my administrator has got the cockpit switched on and I have now enabled the cockpit for myself. So there is a range of different things that you can do to customize the Business One user interface for your own uh, personal preferences. In order to set up your personal preferences, you can go up here and you'll see in the toolbar, there's this little icon of a person and that allows you to choose your own personal settings. So when you click on that, that will open up the personal settings screen and then you have the ability to go in and start putting in additional information. I've got my username, I've got my email address, um, I can see my employee record and so on and so forth. My mobile phone number, I can go in and add that in here if I want and uh, so on and so forth. Now there's some other things in here that we're, we're going to learn about as we progress through when we start showing you how to use the mobile apps, but you get the general idea. You have the ability um, to go and control these. Now, I'm a super user, so that means I'm a system administrator. So I'm able to see certain functions that if you were not a super user, you would not be able to see. So it's important to bear in mind, if you're looking at something on these screens that I'm showing you and it looks a little bit different, maybe some of the things that I'm seeing you don't see, that will just be because of the way of your, your system is set up. It might be set up a little bit differently, but the overall functionality will be consistent. All right, so I've got that information in there. And as soon as I put any information in here, you'll notice I've got this option here to choose update. If I try and close this down, it's gonna know that I've made a change and it's gonna ask me, do I wanna save the changes? So I can either answer yes, no, or I can cancel and bring myself back into here. So in this case, I'm gonna say update. It's just letting me know that these fields are gonna be updated in the, um, from the employee master data and I'll say yes, and that's all good. But now there's a couple of other things as well. You'll see I've got these additional tabs. So I have my services, and I have my display. This is giving me the ability to specify are there particular features in SAP Business One, or particular functions in SAP Business One that I want to have occur whenever I log in. Things like checking the data integrity, things like opening up the exchange rates table so if I need to, I can put in the current exchange rates for the different currencies that I've got. Um, things like showing me an alert for all of the activities that are scheduled today. Right, you can switch those things on and off. So I would encourage you to take a look at these. Most of these functions, there's very little that you can do that's going to break SAP Business One. Unless you're a super user, most of these functions, they are things that you can switch on, take a look, and then you can come back in and switch them off again. Things like the display settings. You can choose your skin style. Right now, um, we're using what's called the, go the golden thread, but there are a number of those different skins that you can choose. You're also able to specify what color you want to use, what language you're operating in. So you can swap to a different language. You can also choose the font that you want to work with. And you can also choose the size of the font that you're going to be using. Okay, so you've got all those different choices. So again, I would encourage you um, to play around with those until, you're able, until you've got the screen set up exactly the way that you want. And when you have, you'll simply click on update. You'll see now, rather than saying update, this now says okay. Why? Because I haven't made any changes. So important to remember that. A couple of other things while I'm on this screen and we're talking about the user interface. When I'm on fields that actually have an underlying set of data that I can refer to, 
For example, you'll see I have this drop down list. This is a drop down list of all the employees. I can click on the drop down list or I can click here on the choose from list and rather than it giving me a drop down list, it will pop up that list of employees for me like this. All right, so again, anywhere where you see this little icon, that is a choose from list. Other things that you can see as well, for example, let's say I've got my groups here. I've got these three little dots, which is called an ellipsis. That ellipsis is going to allow me to go in and call up an additional function. So I'm able to allocate what we call authorization groups. Don't worry about what authorization groups are. I'll explain those to you in more detail later. But this just sets your um, access and says that, well, for example, you're a member of the sales authorization group. So it's going to pick up all of the security and functionality access rights from the sales group. All right. So that's what this function here is for. So I'm just going to go in and I'll just say for now that that's all OK. And then it brings me back here to this screen. Final point, you'll see with the cockpit, you've got your home screen. Now this will default to a set of standard widgets. Each one of these windows um, we like to call a widget. It's a small subset of functionality. These ones here are browser widgets. And this one is my messages and alerts widget. But there are other kinds of widgets. You can actually have a dashboard widget. So for example, if you click here on sales, what you'll see is you've actually got a dashboard widget that's open here in the sales view. So this is a special cockpit that's set up for sales users. In service, I've got one that's set up for service people. In finance, I've got one that's set up for my finance team and the same scenario for purchasing. But what you're going to see is that you have to go in and you have to set what widget or what information you want to see here in this dashboard widget. So you'll see to add a dashboard, click the tool icon and choose settings. Here's the tool icon. I click on there and I choose settings. It now gives me a list of all the different widgets that I've got and this is just a standard set these can be customized so if you have more or less don't panic that just means that someone has done some customization work on your system so I want to see as a salesperson I want to see my sales analysis so I simply select sales analysis and say okay and then what you'll see happen here now is that that sales analysis widget will kick in and it will load and it will initialize and then I'll have a graphical representation of my sales analysis. Who are my top five customers? I can get my fiscal year to date analysis and so on and so forth. And you'll see this information automatically updates as transactions go through. And I'm able to do an analysis using this widget by customer or I can look at it based on sales employees. So I'm now seeing my top five sales employees versus going here to customers and seeing my top five customers. All right, again, with these, anytime you want, you can click the refresh data button. It's just gonna say, hey, this could take a little bit of time to refresh, do you wanna continue? And you'll say yes, and away you go. Little hint, anytime you're refreshing data or things like that, it's usually a good idea to check with your administrator to make sure it's a good time to do that because some of those processes can take some time and they can slow down the operation of the system. So you always want to make sure that uh, if you're going to do anything uh, major that with manipulation of data, just quickly check with your, your primary user or your system administrator and make sure it's the right time to do it. So there you have it. There is the cockpit. Um, and you'll now see we've got these additional options here like common functions. So common functions, this allows you rather than going modules, sales, sales order, okay, I can go straight here and you'll see here is my sales order. So one click takes me straight to that sales order. Now if you want to, you can remove the functions from here that you don't use. So you simply click and drag that function off the screen onto the blank um, canvas area down here. And then if you've done that and you wanna put it back, you simply go across here to the menu, click, hold, and drag down the function that you want and pop it in where you want it. And there it is, there's my sales order back again. 
All right, so that's how you can um, modify the common functions. And then across here, you can see all of your open documents. Now, right now, this is showing that there are no open documents. That's not right. Um, it's just because we haven't refreshed that yet. So I simply go up here, click on the tools icon and choose refresh. And now you'll see there is a listing of all of those open documents. I want to see all my sales orders. One click, there it is, there's my open items list. Again, very similar to what we saw with our drag and relate, which by the way, when you've got the cockpit switched on, it's sitting over here for you as well still. There's your drag and relate. One last thing I'm going to show you before we bring this first of our sessions to a wrap up is this capability to up here to do this searching. All right, so you'll see you've got the option here to search in your data or search for menus. So for example, if I want to find master data, I can start typing it in here. Let's say I'm looking for Earthshaker Corporation. I can simply start typing Earth and hit enter. And what it does is it will bring up the record for Earthshaker. That's because there's only one record that's kind of close to that match. But if I want to go and look for inventory items, I want to look for printers. So if I go and type the word print and press enter, you'll actually see now I get a lookup result and then it's showing me all of the entries in the system that actually have the word print in them. All right, and again, I'm able to simply um, click on the golden arrow and it will drill down and bring up the item master data for that item for me. So that's a very, very handy thing to have as well. So that's an introduction to navigating throughout SAP Business One. Uh, I would encourage you now take some time, log into your sample data and have a little bit of a play around with the system. Uh, as I said, there's not too much you can do wrong. Uh, if you're operating in your sample data, it's easy to recover from. Take a look around, hover over these different options, see what each one of them do. Take a look at what happens, for example, when you're in your modules and you open up sales orders. What you're now going to see is you've got a whole range of different icons that are now available for you. We're going to go through all of these when we get into each module in detail. But for now, have a play around and I look forward to seeing you in our next 15 minute fundamental session.